just how the Eagles drew this one up. You knew they were going to win the game. It was going to be easy. Rube was going to have his 10 observations filed at halftime, right? Yeah, it never seems to go the way you expect with this team. They are full of surprises. They certainly are. The Eagles win this one in New Orleans in week three, 15 to 12. Not a very common score. This is the Eagle Eye podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro down here at the Superdome. That was something. Not very often you go like 25 points below the over under. <laughs> I like that phone you have there behind you. It's uh, what's that from like 1978? I'm in uh, the uh, where am I? I mean, I think I'm in the the timekeeper um, booth okay. right now. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I just thought it was a real character. It was the kind of game they, they won two years ago, and uh, a lot was conspiring against them. Uh, injuries, turnovers. I mean, gosh, they just kept losing players. And you, 40% of your O-line, um, your, your second receiver, you're out there with Paris Campbell and Johnny Wilson. Covey wasn't even you – know, I mean, you're down, to, you're down to guys who, yeah, just haven't gotten first-team reps uh, since ever. Uh, so it was uh, it was a challenge, and I, I just thought it showed a lot of, you know, I think this is the thing that Nick was really good at early in his coaching career was getting the Eagles through these types of games, missing guys, um, you know, loud stadium, really, really loud stadium, one of the loudest I've ever been in. I don't know how, how you feel, but just uh, so yeah, much no, work. I feel the same way. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, um, I think the loudest I've ever been in was that St. Louis Dome, but I think that was like fake piped in noise. Uh, Superdome and and the Superdome, you're like right next to those speakers, like they're right at press box level. It's just probably intentional. Uh, but I just thought they showed a lot of character coming back, especially after the Saints came down and took the lead. And you're starting to think, oh, maybe the defense is starting to buckle. Um, they just showed me a lot with that last drive and really the last drive defensively too, with with the with the takeaway. Uh, it, this is to to get to two and one. With a road win like this is really, really encouraging for this team. It is. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. We'll, we'll talk about the offense and defense and even special teams. We'll break it all down a, a little more in depth. But from a big picture perspective, I know it's only week three, but this game really felt like uh, things were going to go one way or the other. You know, you lose this game, you're one and two going to Tampa where you've had a lot of trouble right before the bye week. Uh, the outlook isn't great. Winning this game, even though it wasn't the prettiest win, I thought they did outplay the Saints most of the afternoon. So, like, it's not like they stole one here. They, I mean, what they did was they should have won by more. But right. uh, I think it just really changes the outlook of the season where we are right now. And maybe that's because we're too close to it. But that's kind of the sense I get. Like, could you imagine another week of just uh, the defense gave up a, too much in, in, in a pivotal moment? The offense turned the football over. Nick Sirianni makes more questionable decisions. Like they're just stuck in this zone where the outlook is bleak to win a game like this changes everything. Yeah. I feel the same way. And I think everything is magnified early in the season. You know, this game's now 33% of their season. Uh, so one and two and two and one, while in the big picture, it might not be a huge difference at this point. It really is, especially with that buy coming up and you know, you, you, I mean, I, I thought getting to two and two uh, at the bye would have been would have been a win. So now you have a chance to be three and one uh, at that point because the schedule does get easier. You never really know, but uh, this is a tough stretch with Brazil and then a Monday night game and then two road games. That's a really really tough stretch for this team. So uh, to win a game in Brazil, to win this one in in Louisiana, uh, and they still haven't really played a complete game where both sides of the ball really played well. It's been a long time since they did that. Uh, almost a year, honestly, but uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, and Tampa, then you look up and Tampa got beat 26, seven at home to Denver and you start thinking, all right, maybe all right, they beat them in the regular season last year. So that wasn't the, that wasn't the issue, um, but they can see their way to three and one. Maybe with the injuries they have now, the bye week's going to come at a good time uh, and you hope to be at full strength for the Browns. Uh, so definitely a lot to be encouraged by still a lot of, a lot of things that are a lot of issues, certainly a lot of things that have to get fixed and improved on, but uh, there was a lot to really like in this game. Yeah, I agree. And it they certainly didn't play their best game. We know that. But they also did some really good things. Like offensively, they were moving the football. They had turnovers, which you obviously can't have. They had the turnovers on downs, which 
weren't ideal either, but you felt like they were making some hay on the offensive side of the ball. And then defensively, man, where the heck did this come from? Or, I mean, I, we had talked about the Saints maybe not being as good as people were saying, you know, 91 points through two weeks. Yeah, I think we knew that they weren't going to be able to keep this up, but that's still a good offense. And yeah. the Eagles have not been a good defense. That was an awful performance against the Falcons last week. So to see them come out, stop the run, get after Derek Carr, all three levels played really well tonight. Yeah, and really the first snap of the game, yeah, I think. This is an afternoon game. Yeah, what did I say? No, I said tonight because I'm oh, so used to yeah. night games. We're so used to night games. Uh, first snap of the game, I think um, the Kobe stuff, uh, um, Alvin Kamara, you could you could tell they wanted to run the ball. And I just thought that, I mean, it sounds crazy. I just thought to start the game with a play like that and just show like we're going to be physical today. This isn't last week. Uh, and they maintained it. Uh, I don't think, I mean, he finished with like 80-something yards, but I don't. he didn't really hurt them. Uh, he had a bunch of carries. And I, I just thought right from the start they were more physical. I thought they were more sound as far as just gap discipline. Um, and most of the most of Kamara's runs never even got to the second level. So you didn't have to worry about the, making these tough open field tackles on them because the guys up front were really, really, I thought, winning most of their battles. Uh, I thought they really pushed the Saints O-line around and, and really dominated, especially those inside guys. We'll talk about them, I'm sure. But um, – Kamara never never really got into the open field. He had that one, I think, 16-yard run. Uh, but so that was as um, long of the game. That was as long of the game. And he he just never he never got a a chance to get out in the open field where he's so dangerous. And uh I was I was just so impressed with, with everything on defense, but the run defense. I mean, we're talking about a historically bad run defense through two weeks against the, the NFL rushing leader at 5.7. And he averaged 3.3 yards a carry. Yeah. He'll take that any time. Yeah, you're right. Let, let's get into the defense first. We normally start offense. The defense deserves its flowers in this game. Uh, they were tremendous. And you're right. It starts with the guys up front. Uh, after saying his play was trash the last two weeks, man, Jalen Carter was unbelievable. Yeah, he said he was trash again, though. He uh, did. And did you hear? I asked him, I was like, well, what would it take for you to yeah. think you had a good game? And he said, I don't know, maybe have six sacks. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. Um, he was tremendous today. He was he was incredible. He even had two uh, two pass knockdowns. Um, and even the plays where he wasn't getting sacks, I think he had two tackles for loss, a uh, couple of quarterback hits. I mean, he was all over the field. This is the guy that we saw early last year, uh, just all over the place, making plays in different ways, um, just looking quick and powerful and athletic. And those guys didn't want to block him. I mean, they just didn't want anything to do with him. I thought Jordan Davis was really good, too. Uh, so it was great to see both of those guys. But Jalen Carter is the guy that you kind of, you know, this is what you expect from him every week. And I like the fact that he's never satisfied and he always wants more. And, you know, he, he'll he never say, I played well. I, I mean, I like a guy who stays hungry like that. So, um, man, I, I don't think the Saints had any idea what they were. Because, I mean, look, let's face it. Jalen Carter didn't do anything the first two weeks. Uh, I would never call a player trash, but he did not play well. He underachieved. And you start to wonder. So it's natural after two games, like where when's he going to show up? He showed up big time. He did. And it's more than just him playing up to expectation. It's playing up to a level that the Eagles need him to play at. Like he is the most important piece of this defense. <laughs> and if this defense is going to be good, they need him to play like the Pro Bowl player he was early in the season last year. They need him to do it for an entire season. So to see that tonight or today was, I thought really encouraging. And you're right. The like him and Jordan Davis together, the two of those guys are so important to the defense in general to see them both have big games. Jordan Davis picks up his first full sack since week two yeah. last year. And that had to be scary. We, I was joking with Jimmy Kemsky just about like, if you're Derek Carr and you see Jordan Davis running at you with a head full of steam with no one in front of him, that's gotta be terrifying. Yeah, I got a free rush and and finished, which was great to see. Um, that's one of the more encouraging things to to see both those guys get going. And it, it's funny how they both seem to play well together when they don't play well. They don't play well at the same time. When they do play well, they play well at the same time. They're kind of like um, twins. Uh, you know, twins always kind of 
like do the same thing, but uh, I don't know. It was, uh, they got to keep doing it, but it was, it was great to see. Yeah. I thought Brandon was actually the edge. So, I mean, they needed the pressure from those guys. Yeah. I thought Brandon Graham was really good too. He was unbelievable. I, I, I was saying on post game show, like, I know he's 36. I know he's retiring, but he's their best edge rusher. Yeah. And in this game, I mean, we'll have to look at the snap counts eventually, but it, Early on, Bryce Huff did start the game, but he was – I think right now it, it, they need him to be a situational pass rusher on known pass. He got – I mean, one of the early plays, he gave up a big run, and then after that it seemed like a lot of Brandon Graham in on early downs. And I, it's not ideal. It's not why you sign Bryce Huff to be a situational player. You don't want a 36-year-old guy being the early down run stuffer necessarily, but I think that's where they're at right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think BG's playing as well as he ever has. And I'm only half kidding when I say maybe they should sign him to another contract and give him another year. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what he wants to do, but he's playing at a really high level. He was he was just physical. He was knocking people around. Um, it's 36, Dave. He just knows how to set an edge, too. It's like yeah. the, the dirty work stuff that he does that you don't notice until there's another guy out there at the same position, not doing right. it. Right. And you really, you just see the stark difference between it. Yeah. He played really well. I thought the Eagles got really good play from every level of their defense today. I'm going to make a prediction that Bryce Huff and BG will be the lead to your snap count story tomorrow morning. Dave, Dave writes about snap count trends every, every week. It's really, it's, it's, I love that moment when, because the snap counts don't show up on the, on the game book until the official ones. Yeah. The official game book, a few hours, usually like what, six hours after the game's over or the next morning. Next morning, normally. Yeah. So, you know, you wake up, the first thing you do, you have a game book on your laptop, you hit reload and then they show up. And I always pour over that stuff. It, there's always some really, because they can talk all they want about different players. But when you look at the snap counts, you see what they're really thinking. And, I don't know what Bryce Huff's snap count was, but it was not very high. Yeah. Um, linebackers. Linebackers played well again today. Yeah. Zach Bond was everywhere again. He was. That was a tough matchup uh, down the left sideline. Um, he had he good actually, coverage on that. He had good coverage. It was, yeah, it was a great catch, great throw. Um, but he played so much. He, you know, he a little concerned after last week. That was not a good game for him. But against his old team, I thought he had that fourth down stop um, on Kamara. And honestly, and, that was Jalen Carter kind of blowing that play up. Yeah, and he finished it. Um, they were both in there. Um, but, yeah, I thought Nakobe had his best game as well. Yeah, I thought both linebackers played well, and that's a tough matchup against Kamara. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I, and secondary. Um, How about Reed? He, Reed's just the, the closer now. He's got the most interceptions by an Eagle in his first 28 career game since Eric Allen. Eagles defensive back since Eric Allen. Jordan Hicks had had seven. Reed's got six. Jordan Hicks never had any more. So at some point, Reed will will win that stat. But he hasn't played a lot of games in his career. You know, he played what four that first year, and then I think he missed a couple last year. I mean, he's probably played like probably started like twenty four games. He's got six interceptions, and these are not routine. I mean, this is a diving. This is a great play he made the last two, and. I don't know how he got his hand under the ball and kept it from hitting the ground. It might have hit the ground, but he had control of it. It was very um, similar to week one. It really was. Um, he's a ball hawk. He has he has five of their last 11 interceptions. Uh, over the last two years, they have 11 interceptions. He has five of them. Um, they don't they don't get a lot of takeaways, but, man, he's he's got a real knack for him. He does. Uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson talked to him after the game. I know Zach Bond was fired up for this one too, but I don't think there was anyone more fired up than CJ about this game. He he came in questionable with a foot injury. We're watching him during pregame warmups. There was no question that they weren't working him out. He was running around doing all that. He was playing. Yeah, uh, this meant a lot to him, and he kind of looks at it like the Saints gave up on him and traded him away. And he's right. I mean, they did. They were happy to get rid of him. So. Uh, he kind of came into this game with a chip on his shoulder. I thought, again, he had some ups and downs in terms of play. Like I, He missed a tackle here and there, but he had another big uh, run stuff in the hole. So he's doing some good things. But the energy he brings really does matter. And I, I think he's always kind of teetering on the edge. Yeah, But I, I think it, it brings something to this defense they were lacking last year. He's playing really physical. 
uh, that's one thing that um, he he seems to have added a little a little more dimension of physicality than the first time around when he was here. I like to see that. And yeah, I mean, he's, he's, you can see why a team might want to give up on him. You know, I mean, he's, he's not, you know, he's not one of the Hardy boys. I mean, he's a guy who has, I don't know about that reference. I don't know where that came from, but he's not, he's not a choir boy. He's going to say things that he's going to have to apologize. He's going to do things that drive you crazy, but he's a really good player. And, um, I, yeah, he, I think he's a good fit for this team. Nick seems to have a high to, high tolerance, more than high tolerance. He he really loves the way he's on the edge, and um, I mean he's going to get you in trouble. I mean the helmet thing could have cost him fifteen yards, uh, but he he's a fun player in that you never quite know what you're going to get from him. He's the same way in the locker room. Um, yeah, when we got in there this afternoon he was waiting he was sitting at his locker legs crossed i walked over and said hey cj you got a minute you said oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but i think it bothered him a little bit that people were talking about how good the saints were yeah i think it bothered the the eagles in general i think there are a few things i think one of them was like how good the saints were because his point was like it's two weeks like you're nothing like nothing matters after two weeks in terms of like who's the best team in the league and the other one was like everyone was kind of counting them out after last week and honestly, rightfully so. They were atrocious against the Falcons. But he said they had confidence in themselves. And, it, man, they played a heck of a game. Give credit to Vic Fangio, too, because uh, he was starting to get questioned. Like, have has the NFL passed Vic by? Is this scheme, like, beyond its best days? And can he get the most out of this group? They played lights out today. Yeah, they really did. And I, I, I was surprised how conservative – the saints were, I mean, that's what they do. They, they, they run the ball and then they max protect every once in a while and, and chuck it deep. But I thought it was a pretty uninspired. I think they felt like they could just run up and down the field on them. I mean, they just kept hammering uh, Kamara and they never really got away from that. Um, especially when, when uh, Slay went out, I mean, they took one shot down against Keeley, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it was the smartest game plan, but uh, yeah, Eagles. I'm not taking anything away from the Eagles' defense. I just thought everything that we talked about, they, they didn't get any sacks from the edges again for what the seventh straight game, but uh, tackling, um, just uh, being disciplined, being in the right place, being physical, uh, right from the first snap of the game, they they were doing those things. And you know, if you can stop the run against a team like the Saints, you're you're going to have a pretty good chance to win. Yeah. Uh- I love the Quinion Mitchell play down the sideline. He gets beat, but he recovers. It was a little underthrown to Rashid yeah. Jaheed, but that was a big time play. Yeah, he's going to be really good. He's, he's, I think, every game he's almost had an interception. Or yeah, he should have had one. That would have been six. He's got to start yeah. coming down with some of these. Yeah, he needs to. Um, this, well, yeah, the last one. There were two of them. Two of them were pretty. Yeah, you got. He'll make. The, you know, he'll make those plays. You think. He should. Uh, I keep picking him as my bold prediction. I'm going to keep going. Q, bold prediction, interception until he gets one. But Were you surprised Keely Ringo was up ahead of Isaiah Rogers? I was. Maybe it's because Rogers is like still dealing with the hand. I don't Could know. Be. That's the only thing I can I can assume. Um, they went right after Keely, which you should do, and got a big play out of it. But uh, I, I still like Keely. I think he'll be all right. It's it's so hard, and they had so many guys playing who really ha- weren't projected for big roles, you know, whether it's Steen or, or, or Fred Johnson or Paris Campbell's out there catching balls. He's not even on the roster. He got cut on the practice squad, a game day call up. Um, you know, you mentioned Keeley, uh, Cooper DeGene's out there returning punts because Covey's hurt. I mean, that just had a bunch of guys out and a bunch of guys in roles. They weren't, you know, they really weren't projected to, to have and, and that's a tough way to win. And I thought all those guys, to varying degrees, uh, were really good, especially especially Steen and and Big Fred. I thought they played really well. Yeah, we'll we'll get to the the offense in a minute. Um, I'm sorry, that's okay. Dave hates when I go out of order. Oh, well, that's why we have an order. <laughs> we don't have an order though, do we? Uh, I guess not really. Uh, anything else defensively that you want to make note of here? No, I think we kind of covered it. Uh, Reed, the Georgia guys tackling. I thought the the play on Slay was a cheap shot. Yeah. Oh, big time. What the heck was that? 
Yeah, he just kept blocking him ten feet out of bounds into a TV camera. Like you're you're a what three hundred and twenty pound right tackle. You're blocking a skinny little corner and you're blocking him through the out of bounds marker. Like what are you doing? Yeah, I don't, I, I think that kind of stuff guy should get ejected. I'm sorry. That's that was like no like willful trying to get someone hurt. Just mm-hmm. uh, fifteen yards. Just it's not enough for me. Yeah, I, I thought that was a cheap shot. I I didn't get a chance to talk to Slay uh, on camera, but he he was walking around the locker room. He was, I think he's okay. Um, I, he was, I think he tried to make an effort to come back in the game. He was like kind of warming up on the yeah. sideline, but I, I think they thought it was better to just stick with Keeley at that point. Yeah. Was it um? Oh, was it Penning? I think it was Penning, right? Yeah, it was Trevor Penning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll keep an eye on the uh, the fine line on Friday. Yeah, uh, he, he'll guarantee he's got to get fined for that. He should have been run out of the game. Yeah, no room like for that. No yeah, room. I'm with yeah. you. Uh, anything else defensively? I'm trying to think if there's anyone else we we should single out that we we haven't yet. I don't think so. I think we kind of we kind of mentioned everyone. Okay, well let's take a break, and then on the other side we'll talk offense, we'll talk special teams, uh, and we'll kind of update the injuries and where they stand from a health standpoint. <laughs> You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that will make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Martorano's Prime on Open Table. All right, Rube, I have some good news and bad news about the Eagles offense. The good news is they put up 460 yards of offense in this game. The bad news is they scored 15 points. Turnovers. Turnovers and goofy play calling. In the red zone. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, they should have scored 35. Yeah, I mean, it's, so it's like good and bad. You feel good because they moved the football, but boneheaded mistakes can't happen. Uh, you're right. We'll, we'll talk about Nick Sirianni and some of his decision-making. Uh, Jalen raised his hand again. I mean, he's got to be better. That play in the end zone, it's not a good throw. I also thought Devontae didn't uh, – come back as hard as he should have to that football. But yeah, we, we talked about it on Thursday. One of the key matchups in this game was Tyron Matthew. Like right now, Jalen Hurts has four interceptions, three of them, Jesse Bates, Xavier McKinney, and Tyron Matthew. Like these veteran safeties are picking up on something and they're getting him. Yeah. They're, they're all similar kind of players. Um, yeah. They're play another one next week, by the way, Antoine Winfield. Yeah, you're right. I thought Jalen did some really, really good things. All three games, he's done some really good things to an extent at various times in the game. Um, but yeah, it's it's weird because like he's making these mistakes, but he's playing well between them for the most part. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard to like it's hard to evaluate him in, in some ways. I mean, I thought I think the last two games he's completed close to he was over eighty percent today. He was just under on Monday night. He didn't throw a touchdown, but he, you know, made some big plays. Um, I thought he played really well today, and and I know two more turnovers. It's it's awful, and you can't keep doing that. I still think he's not going to be like when 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 you write the story of his career when he hangs him up. I just don't think he's going to be a guy who throughout his career turns the ball over a lot. Uh, but I keep saying that, and he keeps doing it. And he's in year five now, and these are mistakes he he just can't make. Um, but I just I thought he was really good for for a lot of the game. I thought he was putting it in, and you know even after the interception, he didn't lose his aggressiveness. I thought he was still firing down the field. Um, you know I I I thought he was seeing things pretty well. Uh, and other I mean the only play that other than the interception, the only ball that he really missed badly, I thought was that I think it was a third down to Gainwell. Um, he kind of over. Yeah, I think that might have been a miscommunication between the two of them, though. Might have been, uh, but. But yeah, it was, uh, and then they, they, the one to Goddard. I'm not sure if that was just a drop. The the one he kind of floated out there on the right. Um, I couldn't really tell. I never got a replay, but I, I thought he was really good. And, um, you know, he's 
if, if you can re- rebound from mistakes and win games at the end, I, I think that's really important. And and he's done that twice now, where he's he's made some mistakes early in games and in the middle of the game, and uh, he's been able to overcome it. And that's a really good quality. But yeah, he's just got to stop turning the ball over. Yeah, I agree, and it makes it a nightmare for me when I have to grade him. It's really hard. Games. I don't know how to how to weigh it because you're right. He did some really good things in this game. I think the story of maybe the game, but certainly on offense, is that they scored two touchdowns without AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Lane Johnson, and Mackay Becton. Yeah. Three of those guys you could argue are three of the most important players on this team, period. So to not have them and then to 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 persevere through it, I, I thought was really impressive in this game. Yeah. Yeah. I did too. And, um, and you know, a guy like Paris Campbell, a guy like Tyler Steen, just, you know, it's, it's so easy. I think to get down yourself, if you get benched, if you get cut, I mean, Paris Campbell was cut. Tyler Steen was benched, you know, all these guys kind of put in, in roles here and, and, and came up huge. And I, I, you know, we, we don't have the benefit of seeing the tape yet, but, I thought both O linemen played well. Paris Campbell had a couple catches, his first catches ever as an Eagle. Um, Johnny Wilson, I think, had a catch, maybe even for a first down. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he fought through contact. Yeah, yeah, he looked real tough on that one down the left sideline. Um, so, and then, and then for Jalen to go out there with, he's missing. Ha- I mean, he's missing Covey too, who's really been kind of the third receiver. So they were down to three receivers. They were down to to. I mean, yeah, they were down to the the bottom of the barrel and. Um, so for Jalen to keep it together and Goddard had to be huge because he was, I mean, he's pretty much the only guy left him and Saquon, but as yeah, far well, as that's the see- beautiful thing about having all these star players is that even when you're without AJ Brown and Devonte Smith, you still have Dallas Goddard and Saquon Barkley. That's a, that's pretty good. It is. And they were both just monumental. Uh, t- uh, I keep wanting to say tonight, but today, this afternoon, um, Yeah. I mean, so this this team hasn't hit a lot of big plays. AJ had the one, but to get big plays like they got from those two guys, they got three guys with sixty yard plays now. Uh, How about I have that? To look up the last time that happened. Um, so Saquon on his touchdown, he was running away from everyone. That was, was really impressive. It was something else. That play. You know, I think we mentioned last week on the pod how he just gets stronger as the game goes on. You're talking about early in the fourth quarter. It was great blocks by I think it was it was Landon and and Jordan. I think Fred had one on that on the long play. I think did he? Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was like four guys chasing him. This is a running back, and he was flying. I can't wait to see what his MPH was on that one. Um, but I thought I thought he he got he's got great vision. He really sees where defenders are coming from and is fast enough to go the other way and they can't catch him. You don't see running backs make those kind of plays. He's so good, Dave. I mean, he's just better than I better than I imagined. And um he's got four hundred scrimmage yards in three games. That's the most by an Eagle since Shady, I think, in thirteen. Okay, so I have the miles per hour on Saquon. You want to take a guess? Uh, yeah, I'm bad at that. I don't know. Twenty one point uh, six six miles per hour. I was gonna say no. I was gonna say twenty, but um, that's like wide receiver number. Yeah, that's really impressive for a guy yeah. who's that big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dallas Goddard said he needs to work on his speed a little bit. He got caught on yeah. his long play. Yeah, still the longest of his career though, right? Sixty one. Get two of the four longest catches of his career today. Yeah, the guys played eight years in the league. And we were talking about it last Seven week, years. like. He needs to be a bigger part of the offense when AJ Brown isn't there. Yeah, and then they fed him early and often in this game. Yeah, even before Devontae got hurt, it was clear that Kellen was drawing stuff up for Goddard, and they couldn't cover him. Um, and he's such a weapon after after the catch. And we were we were saying how his his depth per target this year was three point eight. <laughs> it might be it might go up to about twenty five after this game. He might go from last to to first. Um, Look, he's not going to be this kind of weapon when they're at full strength, but hopefully they can still incorporate him because he's still he's still a big time playmaker. Most yards, I'm sure you looked this up by an Eagles tight end since uh, Pete Retzlaff had 100 had 205 against Washington in 1965 uh, down the street down the Schuylkill over at uh, Franklin Field. Yeah, what a game! Ten catches on 11 targets for 170 yards. 
Uh, Devontae had seven for 79. Paris Campbell, two for 13. Kenny Gainwell, two for 12. Brayton Covey, one for 11. It was a heck of a play. Yeah. Should have been tackled for a moderate gain. Johnny Wilson had that one for nine. Then Saquon, 17 carries, 147 yards, two touchdowns. And a couple catches. Yeah, they spread the ball out to people that you didn't expect them to spread it out to for the most part. So uh, I thought I thought they did a better job. And maybe that's a product of knowing early, you know, early in the week you're not going to have AJ, which they didn't really know going into Atlanta. Uh, but, you know, last week they just didn't get contributions from from anybody really but but uh, Devontae and, you know, Saquon. So to to see what eight different guys caught a pass, they weren't huge numbers, but it was. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it was updated. some of it a product of just hey, you have new guys out there because even Jalen Jokey said by the end of the game, I was noticing some new faces in the huddle with me. Uh, really cool moment in the locker room. We're talking to Fred Johnson, uh, and his teammates are just like Fred, Fred, Fred. Like they're loving this. Uh, he hasn't really played significant snaps. He he got some mop up duty last year. He hasn't played like real offensive snaps since 2021 with the Bengals with the Bengals. So yeah. I mean, this is a guy who like, didn't know what his career was going to hold. He said on that long Saquon run, like Saquon's crossing in the end zone. And Fred's like, I'm finding myself getting a little emotional. Like, sure. This is a, a really cool moment for him. So and he's talked he talked about, how he was thinking of retiring. Mm -hmm. um, he was so tired of just getting cut and going to camps and getting cut and going to camps. Stoutland magic. I mean, stout, uh, these guys all say how stout coaches them to be ready to start, not to play. And, and they play like it. And he spends, we see how much time he spends with everyone from Brett Toth up to lane. And when a guy gets hurt, I mean, stout's got him ready. Yeah. I mean, Fred talked about, you know, when he got here, he was kind of mad at the world. He felt like he never really got a fair shake and he thinks he's on the end of his career. And then stout was like, no, like I'm going to work with you and you got to listen to me though. And, Eventually, he earns his trust, and then he ends up playing a really big role in a huge win when yeah. your arguably best player goes down. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of character. It was uh, – everyone loves Fred, and I think he's a guy that everyone in the locker room, even guys on defense love Fred. Big energy so, guy. Yeah, yeah, he really is. Um, come a long way. And, yeah, they, it's the last thing you want to see is Lane walk down the tunnel. But uh, Fred Fred went in there and – and uh really played well yeah it was scary for lane he, i mean two concussions in this game to lane and Devonte. i thought it was cool after the uh the Devonte concussion the next play was a saquon run yeah i mean that was a pretty cool moment yeah yeah i didn't realize that but um you wonder who they're gonna have sunday in tampa as far as skill guys and and really offensive guys because We've seen guys play a week later after a concussion. It's it's on it's rare you know, to to get through protocol. Um, every little bit hurts. It helps that it's a Sunday game. It helps it's an early game. You hope they can get on the plane because sometimes guys can't fly back right away. Yeah, I didn't see Devante after the game. Uh, I hope he's okay. That was really scary. It was. Um, for as loud as the stadium is, it was very quiet for a minute there. Yeah, uh, you didn't know what was going to happen. You had Nick Sirianni kind of next to him, hold like touching his leg. Um, yeah, so I hope he's okay. Eventually, a big pop when he, he gets up and walks off and fans gave him a nice ovation. But Lane, too. I mean, Lane was – you could tell Lane was wobbly. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, you want those guys back. But it's also – I mean, it wasn't all that long ago. The league didn't have any concussion protocol. It was just like, yeah, I'm feeling better. Okay, you go play. So it's good that they're taking care of the guys and, you know – as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, Makai Becton was a finger injury. Saw him in the locker room. It looked like they were starting to try to get him ready to go back in the game. And then they didn't. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a reasonable hope that he might be ready for next week. Uh, Brayton Covey had his, his, his arm in a sling after the game. So I don't know how long he's going to be out, but he's a big part of this team, especially as a punt returner. And he's made some nice plays on offense too. Yeah. And then, who knows if AJ will be ready? I mean, didn't practice at all. Um, so it's, I mean, gosh, the thought of going down there uh, without AJ and and Devante is is kind of a scary one, and and possibly Lane, and possibly Covey as well. Yeah. So we might have a whole new cast to receive. I have to bring back John Ross or something. 
I mean, it might be an option. It might be. I'm I'm being kind of half serious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The announcer in the press box kept calling Cooper DeGene, Cooper DeJean, like the mustard. (laughs) That was uh, that was fun. Interesting. Uh, I caught up with Tyler Steen after the game. First time I've talked to him since. Yeah, we haven't seen him. Yeah, Yeah. he hasn't really been around. He still has. It's got to be a little awkward. He still has the right guard locker in the back corner of the locker room hasn't been around a whole lot, but he talked about just, you know, you know how Nick Sirianni has his role meeting for every single player. That's when he, he sat Tyler down. And even though it was obvious to everyone, he said, that's where he sat me down and told me that I'm you're a backup, but we need you to be ready and need you to do all these other things. And he, he said he accepted it and it was tough, but uh, he, he was just trying to be a good teammate. And that, this is why you can't have a guy like worried about himself to the point where he gets in his head and he's not ready for the moment. Uh, now, I don't know if he played particularly well, but um, you still need him to be able to get in there and, and you need to be able to run your offense with these guys who aren't starters. Yeah. Yeah. And he's kind of in a different position as Fred because Fred kind of, I mean, Fred never expected to be a starter. I mean, Tyler, that's a tough deal. You think you're the starting right guard and all of a sudden this tackle that they signed is, is playing your position as soon as you get hurt and, never comes out so uh, i give him credit for i don't think it's i don't think it's an easy thing to do yeah. you lose your job being ready uh being ready anyway you have to make it bigger than yourself and and really put the team first and and he did that uh, anything else offensively you want to talk about no um I, i'm i'm just i mean i didn't realize they had 470 yards still just before we started um this offense is capable of so much and um, I'll have to figure out how many of those yards they had after those guys left the game, but there was a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, their two biggest plays came with that. That was a quarter of their yards, yeah, 65 yards and 61 yards. Yeah. So um, if they are missing some guys, you, you feel like the backups are at least competent. You got to get those guys back as soon as possible, but uh, it's great for everyone's confidence when you can win a game when you're down a bunch of guys yeah. and Slay too. Slay didn't come back. I, he'll, he should be fine. I would think. Yeah. Um, I think he'll be day. okay. Yeah. Um, special teams, not a great day. Not a great day. Yeah. The, the pump block. Uh, what was your read on that? I, I mean, I watched it. It looked like was Nolan not wide enough. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we get some clarity from Michael Clay this week. Sometimes, you know, the, like the, they'll kind of let a guy come around the edge because they don't think he, he like he'll be able to get there, but it, right. it looked like he had a pretty flat route to the, to the punt. Right. Yeah. I I'm, that's my guess. And again, I don't know what exactly what Nolan's assignment was, but it looked like, um, I mean, he just ran right behind Nolan. So you can only, it's, it's, it's a guess, but you can only assume that. Yeah. Uh, Jake Elliott misses a 60 yarder, uh, I was a little surprised. I'm like, I'm so used to watching Jake make these big kicks. I missed it badly. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if he's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I week one, we watched him slip a little bit. I'm just wondering if everything is right. I don't know that I shouldn't speculate, I guess, but I'm just kind of wondering. Cause I'm, it's weird to not see, like 60 yarders in a dome. It's a kind of a, like it's not an easy kick, but you would expect him at least to have enough leg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh it was a little surprising. I wonder if he was shaken up by the temple kid making the 64 yarder <laughs> and he's Maybe. no longer like the king of the link. Mm-hmm. Like the you know, you know, he's not the, the king kicker of the link. Uh, but yeah, that was that was surprising. You kind of figure if he's gonna miss it, it's gonna be it's gonna be close at least. I mean, yeah. he can I know 60 is a long way, but he I mean he's made two sixty ones. It's one of only five kickers in history to make 261. So you kind of um, expect it to be closer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Nick Sirianni. Um, Because if they lose this game, I I think that becomes the conversation for the whole week. Yeah. Uh, So he kind of gets bailed out here by the win, which he, look, he has, he plays a role in it, obviously. But if they lose this game, we're talking about another week of questioning game management. And it maybe not being the the best outing for him. Yeah, and he said he he called that Saquon run uh, on fourth down when he went for it. Um, I don't know why is he calling that play. Yeah, 
The, Why do you the, have Kellen here? I, I and, know. I mean, and, you know, we were watching, like, before that play, Nick was talking to Jalen for a long time, and Kellen was kind of, like, off to the side. It was kind of a weird dynamic. Um, I mean, they were on the 14, 14-yard 14 line. Um, I, have to look, I have to look it up. I'm not prepared. You can look it up. But uh, 15 seconds left. I uh, think. 18. 18-yard 18 yeah, line. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm at the wrong one. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find it. That's all right. But in any case, it was just before halftime. Uh, they were at down, the 15. They were at the 15. You're down mm-hmm. 3 nothing. Um, I don't understand why you're going for it on fourth down. You, what are you gaining? Yeah, you maybe get one shot, maybe two shots to the end zone. Maybe, probably one, because the probably clock's going to run down to 10. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably under... I don't know, under seven, you're not taking in two shots. That was the one I, I the other ones like I, I can see it. That, that fourth one, down made no sense to me. Because yeah, I mean, you're you're taking it's three guaranteed points, we think. We think maybe Jalen, maybe um Jake Elliott is hurt. Maybe that's why he did you know what I'm kicking, but no, I'm kidding. No. Um <laughs> yeah, I mean it's if, a, if that's the case, then he's out of his mind because he's actually like six up, yards. Yeah. It's a layup field goal, and even if you convert, your odds of getting more than a field goal are so slim. Yeah, and you're risking honestly. The, what I was thinking was, if you if you if you do get it and you take a shot in the end zone, I'm worried Jalen's going to throw an interception. Honestly, that's what I was thinking. I was like, you know what? It, it, it's a this is a close to the vest, low scoring, one possession type game. Take the points there. And he won against the traditional charts again. Yeah. And it yeah. failed again. Like <laughs> it's back to back weeks. He goes against the grain and is wrong. And and we think he goes with his gut. It's not good. And we've talked about it, but like in that building, we know they want to follow the chart. That's why they have the chart. Yeah. So if it's you're not, gonna go against it, you better have a really good reason. It's not about like if it's a 50-50, you know, you go with your gut, but yeah, it's not about being aggressive. It's about being smart. And sometimes it's smart to be aggressive. Sometimes it's not smart to be aggressive. So um, I like I think Doug Peterson, for the most part, was, uh, you know, intelligently aggressive. Like there were some times where he pushed it. But uh, Nick is Nick. I don't know if Nick's just in his own head so much. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. But for a guy who talks about situational football as much as he does. He really screws it up sometimes. He's got to just let Kellen handle the situations. I mean, if you're Kellen Moore, you're like, why did I come here when he's he's botching this before halftime? I mean, it's it's not good. No, it wasn't good. And, I mean, he's bailed out because if they lose this game, the heat gets turned up on him a lot. Yeah. And, I mean, it's going to be a topic anyway mm-hmm. because it was it didn't cost him a game, but it was just it just was not smart. I'm trying to think if there's anything else from this game that I, I wanted to hit. I don't think so. I think we did a still, good job. Still no sacks from the edge rushers. Yeah. I believe that's seven games in a row without a sack from an edge. Um, I mean, the defense played great, so I'm not going to make a huge thing about it, but you know, something to keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. The, the pressure came from – and, B, yeah, BG has some good pressures, but most of it came from from the middle. Yeah, that's all I have. This is fun. It's as we record this, it is 524, and I love it. 524 your time. Yeah. My 624 time. here. Yeah. yeah. Did you get a chance to get out and have some uh, some good food last night? I did. Yeah. Um, I met up with Martin Frank from the news journal. We went out to uh <laughs> went out to uh, Felix's. Uh oh, nice. Good. Got some seafood. Met a, then we went out and, and went to Frenchman Street, listened to some music. Tim McManus met met up with us. It was a lot of fun. Took some selfies with some Eagles fans uh, who probably learned this morning that they met me when they looked through their camera roll because it was a, <laughs> there was some imbibing going on yeah. in New Orleans. But okay. it was fun. I was in your neck of the woods yesterday, Saturday, uh, in Medford, near, near your neck of the woods, mm-hmm. uh, for Medford Oktoberfest, which was a great event enjoyed that it was funny this guy comes up to me wearing a uriah heap t-shirt i don't know if you know uriah heap it's a charles dickens character but it's a band british band from the 70s and they're still around 
Um, and he had, he was showing me his Eagles tattoo and he's like, yeah, what do you think of that? And I said, I'm more impressed with your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Uriah Heap guy. I saw him at the Capitol Theater in Passaic in like 78. Crushed it. But uh, yeah, it was a nice event out there. A bunch of good music. They had the, the Stein, uh, Stein hoisting contest. Mm -hmm which is always fun to watch. I one think I'd be good at that after holding a microphone as long yeah. as I have to. In these <laughs> That's scrums. hard. Yeah. Uh, one guy, one guy held that Stein full Stein of beer for six fifty two, And it, it, it wow. was, I, it was phenomenal. It's probably the most incredible athletic feat I've seen. Um, probably since Randall's 95 yard <laughs> touchdown to Fred Barnett in Buffalo. It was pretty impressive. Uh, I can't wait to get back to my hotel room and get a shower. It's very gross here. I walked to the stadium like an idiot yeah. and I was just drenched in sweat. It's like 90 degrees and super humid here. I need to get back to Philly and get the fall weather real soon. I got to ask you one thing mm -hmm. before we go. How was the elevator experience? Not bad today. Honestly. Yeah. The elevator uh, in new Orleans is not my favorite place in the world. Worked okay today. They got us up and down pretty quick. Uh, I didn't feel like I was, I, I held my breath, yeah. but uh, it, it wasn't scary today. Okay. You're I'll tell you what though, me. this place is so loud. It is. Um, I ended up not using the earplugs he gave me because I, I put my, um, my AirPods in and I put the noise canceling on for a little bit and that helped, yeah. but yeah. yeah, you leave here with a headache. Yeah. And Eagles leave here with the win. Two if you enjoy one. the Eagle Eye podcast. Uh, you know what to do. Please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. You got any final words, Rube? No, I, I think this team's going to be three and one when a, a few hours ago I was worried there'd be one and three. So uh, certainly a big win. Yeah, winning cures quite a bit. All right, that's it for Rube. I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. Everyone enjoy the, the rest of what uh, is left of your weekend. We'll be back with you on Tuesday getting ready for Tampa Bay.